I'm at Robert Wells, the pastor here at the Life Church in Washington campus. And let's give God a hand clap. Amen. We praise you right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the word is going to swerve God is going to become void. In the name of Jesus, have your way in this place today, Father. We are a part of your will, God. We're not having church, Lord. We are a part of your will. Line us up. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just a real quick announcement. We have promoted those songs of songs, but a series in the series to serve, uh, to serve effectively. To serve effectively is our is our message. And 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 to serve in the Greek, it means to wait on tables, to serve tables, to minister. And more definitions to that is literally kicking up the dust because you're not you're always on the move. You're kicking up the dust because you're always on the move. To till, to execute, yes. bring to pass. Because I told you one day we got to stand before God. Listen, serving is important because we got to bring some things to pass. And it's literally worship when you worship. It's literally worship. Joshua uh, 24, 15, Joshua will write, As for me and my household, me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. And another word is worship. We're going to worship in my house. It's serving the Lord. That's how important serving is. Serving means caring for the needs of others as the Lord guides in the active or practical way. Uh, means caring for the needs of others as the Lord guides in an active and practical way. Father, let me pray again. Father, I just want to say thank you. I come against anything that will try to hit the word today. God, take over my mind today, my mouth, in the name of Jesus. Our Lord, set the atmosphere, God. I come against any demonic force that is here right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I push you back. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. When I go to restaurants, I love watching how people serve. Like being a leader, I pay attention to details. That's leadership for me. So uh, when I go to Chick-fil-A or B-52s or a certain restaurant, or even uh, El Greco's, I watch how people treat each other. And, and, you know, do you need anything? I watch that type of stuff, and I always bring that back here. I'm telling you, you can learn um, serving from businesses, not just in the church, but watch where everywhere you go. Don't go to Popeye's, though. <laughs> Amen. God, for the thousand times, listen, I read this verse a thousand times. Look, Matthew 25, 21, Matthew writes the words of Jesus. He said, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. And that day we stand before him. You have been faithful in a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And I'm going to tell you, I was guilty because I didn't see, well done, my good and faithful servant. I didn't see servant. All I'm sitting up and studying this, and I was like, we can be, we can say things and talk, quote the scriptures, but did you ever realize that that word was right there, my good and faithful servant? Spectators ain't going to hear this. Mm. We had everybody in the church should be serving this is powerful, man, today. You'll see. Just like God in the beginning, he, he worked for six days and on the seventh day he rested. And it's the same way with us. We got a work to do and we enter that same rest. We enter that same rest. But I want you to understand today, but as your pastor, I understand my calling. Yeah. Check it out. Let me, let me show you. Ephesians 4.11, Paul writes, he says, So Christ himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, I got that spirit. The pastors, I got that spirit. And teachers. Listen to 12, though. He said, to equip his people for works of service. That's why I'm always telling you, come on, man, get involved. Because I know what I'm called to do. And you've got to know what you're called to do. And here's the power of it. So that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach the unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So mature growth, greater glory and understanding of who Christ is as a whole, as a whole in the church begins with the whole church serving. You got to understand that. If you want to know him in a greater way, if our church, when people walk through that door, she, they should be set free. But it has to do with the atmosphere of the church, and everybody should be serving. And I'm gonna tell you, like with one mind at the end of the service. Listen, I'm telling you, you can have you you be understanding why some churches are powerful, and I'm gonna explain today. Instead of just having church coming on Sundays, not getting involved, going back home, missing empty seats and things like that. Listen, it's gonna be power today. 
Because when Paul was writing all them books, he was speaking to the whole church. He wasn't just speaking to individuals. He was speaking to the whole church. And he was letting them know his power in there. So my main text, Psalms 37, 4, and, 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 and it goes, enjoy serving, enjoy serving the Lord, and he will give you what you want. Depend on the Lord and trust in him, and he will take care of you. Amen. And, and so enjoy serving the Lord. Kingdom revelations are released to those who serve and help be, build the kingdom of God. I was telling you about, I get revelations, man, from God. God speaks to me. Because I told you, I ain't been perfect, but I've been faithful. And I'm telling you, once you learn to serve, I'm telling you, God, you'll start hearing from God in ways you'll be like this, man. Because that's what we were created for. Servants, servants of God get to hear, see, do, and experience things in this life that spectators can't. Yeah. Uh, last week, when, G when, when Jesus turned the water into wine, it started with his mother coming to him made out of wine. And, 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 and he was like, well, what does that have to do with me? Yeah. But I guess the Holy Spirit, I guess the Father said, do it. And, and it said that she went to the service and was like, do whatever he says. And, 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 and Jesus told him, go get some water pots and all that. And, and took it back. And the, the, the wine was beautiful. The guests of the party were like, man, this, man, why did why they put out the best wine last? And, but the, the moral of that story to me is the servants got to know who did it. It said nobody in there knew where the wine came from, but the servants did. Read the story, John 2. That's what happens, man. You get to know some things that, that spectators can't. And, and, and this is why the devil makes us hesitant to serve with using our life, talent, times, and treasures because serving in the kingdom of God takes you into a deeper knowing of who Christ is. I'm telling you, I'm talking power today. John 17, 3, Jesus said, this is eternal life that they may know you and your son, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That's eternal life. We always think eternal life is this place. He is eternal life. And he said, this is to know him. That's why Paul said that I may know him. It's all about knowing, going to greater levels in God. And it starts with serving. Putting your hands in the soil. Getting involved in what God is doing in the earth. Even in the Old Testament, Elijah, the servant, had, he had an experience. He was, he was a, Elijah had this servant. And then went to this, this town called uh, Dothan. And, and Elijah was telling, they was at war with the Syrians. And the king of Syria was telling his servants where they was going to go and attack the Israelites from. And, and, but Elijah would know these things and would tell the king of Israel, like, look, don't go this way, don't go this way. And so the, the king of Syria, he thought that, that, that some of his people was telling. He, he, he thought he had some snitches in his camp. And he was like, man, what's up? And then one of the servants was like, no, that's not it. He said, the, the prophet Elijah in Israel, man, he said, he and doctor, he said, man, he's telling the king everything. Because God was speaking to him to, to, to protect you. God was speaking. But this servant was scared because when they woke up the next morning, he had a great army, the Bible says, that surrounded the city of Dothan. And, and Elijah went out and went like this and, and told his servant, he said, don't be afraid. He said, Lord, open my servant eyes and let him see what I see. And he opened up and he saw a, a hill full of chariots all around Elijah. They said around Elijah. And it was chariots and horses around. And so that's what I'm saying, man. Look, it, but it was his servant. And so servants, being a servant, it'll tap you to behind the scenes. You get to see things before they come. I'm telling you, how better it is you, you the devil come in here, attack you off guard, man. Man, how powerful it would be that you could see behind the scenes before you get there. But that's what serving does. It's supernatural. Serving is supernatural. Same horses and chariots of fires that took Elijah up. That was when you buy this guy. Was it the same ones? Main point two, to serve effectively, keep your private life clean. And you can write this down. You only serve effectively to the level you live privately. Woo. You only serve to the level effectively to the level you live privately. Your private life is your ministry. Don't get, don't come up in here and all, hallelujah! But you go home and you mean to your wife. You mean to the kids. You don't know how to treat your co-worker right and all that. And then you got the word Christian in your mouth. Ooh, that's dangerous. 
I remember serving in the church back in the days and I was living loose and it manifested in my servanthood. I stopped showing up. I used to be sitting there buzzing from the night before. I got there late too. And I'm buzzing. And eventually it, it, it manifested. Well, I had sex with some girl the night before, but I'm, I'm in the church the next day. I'm like this. Eventually, it's going to manifest. It's going to show up in your life. It's going to show up in your servanthood. Listen close. Private issues manifest themselves in the one who serves, serves life in the church by the choices they, they make when no one is looking. Key things that are affecting our servanthood in the church. A life unorganized or a life where you're hurting and no one knows, but you're not honest with God and no one else. This condition is hindering many followers of Christ in the church who serve and who are currently serving from serving effectively in the church. You have to be honest with people because I'm telling you, man, you, when you dealing with stuff at home and in your private life, it affects this. So you need to talk to somebody. I tell everybody, look, this is the season. Like at the church, you'd be like, you be like, Pastor, I need to talk. Man, this is the season you can get a hold of me. I was set up. I got, I'm all week. I've just been seeing people, married couples, single people, just all week, all for the last like two months. I've been busy seeing individuals like, what's going on? You know, and speaking into their lives, what the Holy Spirit is telling me to help them with. But you got to follow the assignment I give you when I talk to you. Yesterday on the road, and I was telling my, my father-in-law that, man, I was listening to a podcast, and he, the, 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 the people said something that affected my heart, man. I said, this is me. I ain't going to tell you what it is. <laughs> but I said, this is me. I had to deal with myself. And, 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 and so I can grow, so I can be a better person, that I can serve effectively. This is what it's all about. We got to serve until he comes. So it's not just you, you doing it to, to better yourself, but, but for serving. We got to serve and we want to serve effectively by dealing with the issues that we have in our hearts with the Holy, by the Holy Spirit and, and confessing your sins to somebody you can trust and, 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 and telling it to God. We got to be healthy when it comes to serving. Listen close. Pastors carry around a heavy load as, as we serve. I just want y'all to understand that. And look, and look, this is what I had to learn. I had to learn that God's grace was for me too and not just for the people that I'm serving, that I'm preaching to. I had to learn that. Because you'll be like, you know, I can get them by myself sometime. And the enemy will beat the dog breaks off me, man. And I'll be like, oh no, I had to remember that. Oh, this grace for me too. And that's what pastors have because it's, it's a heavy load for pastors. In the season, and thank God we made it through the coronavirus. It was heavy. Honestly, honesty increases ministry effectiveness. Continue with key things that are affecting our servanthood. Alcohol and drugs. Mental health. You got to be honest about your mental health. I think we all deal with mental health on some level. I told you, I was honest up here. Sometimes I get off this stage and I go home and I cut the lights off and sit in the dark sometimes. And I'm being honest with you. Sex outside of marriage. It's going on. This is what's hindering the servanthood in the church. Sex outside of marriage because your conscience ain't clear. You come in here with plenty of guilt, fear, and shame. So you're not as effective. You'll smile like that. Hey, how you <laughs> Toxic relationships. Potawatomy, gambling, and partying. All these are hindering us from getting started with serving. And, and while we serve, uh, uh, it's affecting us while we serve. What is hindering many Christ followers from serving and who currently serve and from a, a serving effectively? They are eating from two tables. 1 Corinthians 10, 21, Paul writes this. He said, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Paul was addressing their private life. He was telling them, look, you got saved, delivered. You can't go back to this table. You, got, you can't eat from two tables. And this is what affects a lot of servanthood in the church. Eating from two tables is why we have to pray to the Lord to send more workers into the harvest. That's Matthew 9, 38. Jesus said, Acts, pray to the Lord to send more workers out to the harvest. This is why we got to do that because a lot of people are eating from two tables. 
popped in my spirit as I was writing the sermon. I, I saw Jesus sitting at his table, the Last Supper. I seen that table in my spirit in the upper room. And it was powerful because it exemplified the disciples were eating and serving God from one table. Oh, that's good. They were eating and serving God from one table. And that's what the Christ, as Christ follows, we ain't got no business eating from two tables. But Judas, the one who betrayed Jesus, he was eating from two, he was serving God, and, but he was eating from two tables. And you see his results. He didn't make it to the next level. I'm telling you, with or without you, we're going to the next level. Done. All you're going to do is get replaced. That's what Peter and them came at. Man, we got to find some. They prayed, and Lord, we got to find somebody to take his place. They prayed it was Matthew. Somebody to take your place. 1 Corinthians 6 9, Paul writes, uh, talking about, talking to the Christ followers who were living a double life. Because when we read these new books, listen, Paul ain't talking to the world, he's talking to the church. People still was living from two tables. He said, or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? He said, do not be deceived. You can deceive yourself and be like, I'm getting in the glory. Neither the sexually or more, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, or, or swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And Paul said this, and that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the spirit of our God. That was what some of you were. You got to understand, I've been born again. Amen. And my, even, you know, the enemy, when he coming into your proper life, you got to understand, I told you, how we're going to win is through knowledge. Right, the scriptures be all in your spirit. Yeah. And they keep you from two tables. Man, you must be kind. You must be kind. Yeah. Kindness is an essential in the body of Christ. If, if someone is not kind in this ministry, listen, they stick out. Y'all, this church so loving, man. I'm telling you, you catch somebody that's mean and, and, and don't know how to treat people, you stick out. And they get right to the top. I'm like, what? For real? <laughs> it, it sticks out. The definition of kindness in the West is a, a kind person. In reality, is someone with the interests of the affected person in mind. While taking action or making an opinion, everyone should be treated with kindness by those who serve in the church. And it's just like you giving them like straight eye attention when they talk and things like that. I'll be outside, I'll try to, but somebody, hey, I'll be like, hey, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. But I, I see you. I come out there on purpose. I told you, I'm out there on purpose. You holding doors, you, 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 you got a smile on your face. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Don't forget that. I, we, we, we huh? Yeah, all that. Listen, don't forget your morals, man. Yes, ma'am. You see an older person? Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Hugs. You know, talking to them, following up, you know, even getting their numbers. Treating them, you know, treating our church like a five-star hotel. Whoever been to a five-star hotel? God will get you there if you learn how to serve. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Greeks means to be useful. Useful kindness refers to meeting real needs in God's way, in his timing, in timely fashion. So, so, so kindness is not loose. It's not all over the place. You know, everybody gets treated with kindness, but once you tap into the Holy Spirit, it's a, it's a supernatural kindness that takes place. It's a targeted kindness. Amen. There's certain people that's going to be picked out. Listen, this kindness by the Holy Spirit has specific targets as we serve as well for the kingdom of God. And you remember all those people that was by the pool of Bethesda in John 5. Yes, yes. All these sick people and all that. But here's Jesus targeting this one man and asking him, do you want to get well? Yes. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes target is just for specific people. When you serving in the body of Christ, you've got to open up your eyes and look because God will have your heart burning for some person. I, when I came in today, I saw a young lady that's serving now. And she's she been in my heart. It was a few other people that God been keeping in my heart. And I was like, I saw her serving at the door. I said, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to this quote. 
Prayer is more powerful than, than uh, no, prayer is more, uh, prayer does more work than work itself. Listen, that, that keeps, that, this load, it keeps the load down when you understand this. Listen, prayer does more work than work itself. I've been praying for people. Lord, get them. And I, I saw that today. I was like this. Yes. Yes. I dare you to start praying for people that, you know, in the church to serve and ask the Lord of the harvest and send more labors and ask. But Jesus had a specific target with this guy. He healed him. Got up, take up your mat and walk. I'm telling you, so so God will put people in your life that you will see, and and, and you must pay attention because you don't know what that person is going through. Right. You'll just be standing there, and there's something about this person. That's what the kindness of the Holy Spirit does. It'll specifically pick out somebody, and you must follow through with it. You don't know what God is up to. Many people, many uh, many of the people God are sending here are broken and fragile. That's why kindness is so important. We can't be rough, mean, or tough acting as we serve in the body of Christ, but we must be and show compassion and empathy and be considerate, sympathetic, loving, and gentle, but also humane, but also humane, which means having or showing compassion or benevolence. And benevolence means this, listen, the quality of being well-meaning, well-meaning as you serve. Like, like somebody want to use the bathroom, somebody knew, where's the bathroom? Don't go like this, be like, what? go down that way. Take them, that's fire star. Be like, come on, let me show you. Yes, yes, yes. And you take them down, and here you go. That's five star. Mm -hmm. and, and so when, when a five star, listen, when you got a five star, listen, the king, king stays in these places. Mm -hmm. The president shows up in these places. People start to come of importance. Not just people that, that's poor, but rich people. And look, everybody needs Jesus. A five-star church, man, listen, everybody coming. It don't have nothing to do with status when there's kindness in the, in the air. We, we must serve with the other person's best interests in mind. It's not about you. God saved you. And he's going to bless you and all that. But serve. With a, with, a, with a mind full of knowledge. This is what I'm, I'm teaching you so you won't be serving empty-headed. But you'll be serving with understanding. Because God is so near. Philippians 2, 3, Paul writes, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Not looking out for your own interests, but the interests of others. It's, man, listen, that's what kindness is all about. That's what serving is all about. It's like, that's what Jesus came. He came and gave his life. Uh, um, you, are, you are ready and waiting to love on someone as you serve. And I wrote that for the host team. Y'all know, if I got something to say, I'll say it. <laughs> but I say it humbly. And it's like, as you stand on your post, you are ready and waiting to love on someone as you serve. That's what you're standing there for. Yes. It's like this. Yes. We ain't talking. Five minutes to, we, we getting in place. Or so ten minutes to, we, 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 we prepared. That's, what, that's why John the Baptist's ministry was so important. Because he, he, he prepared the way for the Lord. And so when Jesus came, he was already in the water. He was waiting on Christ. To take him to the next level. Because that's what happens when we're in place. And kindness is busting forth in the church. And I'm going to prove it. it. It takes people to the next level. You'll never know, man. Somebody come in here broken and you, your smile and how you doing? You in place. Welcome to Light Church. How you doing? Hope you have a great time. With You'll never know what will happen. Because kindness is supernatural. We're not being nice. It's to loving people more than they deserve. And that was a quote by Joseph Gober. And I quote, a single act of kindness throws out roots in all directions. And the roots spring up and make new trees. Hallelujah. That was by Amelia, Amelia Earhart. What's unique about kindness is that it's supernatural. And it's the actual fruit of God. And it's one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I just want you to love, joy, peace, kindness, faith, and gentleness, self, self control, gentleness. You know, that's it's nine of them. Now check it out. And kindness is one of them. I just want you to understand, when you practice kind, you choose to be kind, 
Because you understand now what the definition is. You choose to be kind. It's only one fruit. So when you choose one of these attributes from God, the rest of them flow through it automatically. Because it's only one fruit. And so it's working on you. As you work in this way, it's working on you. The Holy Spirit working on you as you're serving out. He's serving in because the Holy Spirit is inside you. And, he, and faithfulness and joy and, and peace and, and just all that stuff just running loose in you. But you, you got kindness up, 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 up first. Up front. Kindness is the bait of salvation. It was God's kindness toward me that led me to repentance. I, don't, I still to this day don't know why he chose me. I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, man. Just don't know. It's a lot of brothers didn't make it that was doing the same thing I was doing. But his kindness showed up. And listen, I'm going to tell you, kindness always comes. Kindness comes with full grace. I'm going to prove it. Listen, Ephesians 2, 6, Paul writes, that's why it's so important in the church to have kindness because things break out from kindness. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Kindness came first. Titus 3, 3. And at one time we were too foolish. We were too, we were once foolish and disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy and at being hated and hated one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. But kindness showed up first. That's why it's important in the church. That we be on post with kindness, because in that, that's when everything else releases. Romans 2, 4, Paul writes, Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, his forbearance, his patience, not realizing that it was God's kindness that, that led us to repentance? That's why it's important to be kind to people and gentle and loving in this broken world. And in my closing, to main point three, to serve effectively, you must be of the same mind. It's, it's what, the, what made the first church age so powerful. As disciples, on the day of Pentecost, they, they before, that, before that, they received instructions from the Lord. And in Acts 1-8, uh, Jesus gave them an instruction. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now listen close. The first Age disciples came into agreement with the instructions given by Jesus and the Holy Spirit's lead as they served in the kingdom of God, which gave them the mind of Christ. The Holy Spirit came and gave them power to carry out the instructions. They were all in agreement with these instructions. They were walking in one mind. And this, this is what you get when Paul said, we have the mind of Christ. Because the instructions came from his mind first. He said it to them. They lined up with it. Now we have the mind of Christ. This will give us the mind of Christ. When we lined up with what he already said. Listen close. Being of one mind as we serve is a system. Being of one mind as we serve is a system. That affects the spiritual realms to relief to release spiritual blessings in the church. It's a system. And we got a natural system. I was saying that last week. We got to be in place. We got to, our church is only strong as a system. But listen, having one mind is a powerful system that releases the, the uh, blessings out of the spiritual realms. Ephesians 1, 3, Paul writes, Blessed be the God and our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Talking about the spiritual realms. Every spiritual blessing starts in the, the spiritual realm first and then it manifests in the natural realm. So being of one mind as we serve as a portal from heaven that releases signs, miracles, and wonders. Man, I'm talking power today. And this is why when you go to other people's churches, but not all of them, just because they're making noise and jumping around don't mean nothing. I'm talking about sometimes you go to, you can feel it. When I go to Chicago Tabernacle, you can feel it. Everybody on one, one accord. They're in one mind. And, and, and listen, it's a portal to the heavenly realms. Yeah. 
And even angels come through these things. There, there's no sickness. There, there won't be no people will come to our church and get delivered. And I'm telling you, it's coming. It ain't no just you go home just a powerful word. No, it's gonna be healing gonna be happening in this place. But it all comes from the church. Everybody serving and being of one mind. Being of one mind makes demons submit. Yeah. They won't have no place in here. No. See, the reason why I had to pray again because some of the minds were here were, were all over the place. I'm telling you, when you come to church, come to see the king. Yeah. Come to hear from the king. Yeah. Freedom to do what they want when we not on one accord. But that's why the first church age was so powerful because they heard the instructions. The Holy Spirit came and they, they carried it out. They were, they were on the same page. Being on one mind brings peace. Breaks strongholds. You, 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 you could be dealing with something. I'm telling you, we'd be on one mind. Somebody come in here, alcohol, and leave out free. Yeah. On crack. I'm telling you, it's, that's what God, that's our soil here. That's why people got drug and alcohol problems, man. They're dealing with a lot. But if we get a one mind and everybody start to serve, man, it'll be an overflow in this place. People being delivered. I want to see delivered. I don't want to play church. I want God's will to be done, man. When we read the book of Acts, we, we, can, we got to get back to that first church age. Matthew 18, 18, truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth, he's talking about a church that's on, that's on one accord. He said, well, you will bind in heaven. He said, whatever you loose on earth, but will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two or three of you at the most agree on anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my heavenly Father. And it's more than two of us. Just imagine all us coming together. Woo! On one mind. And, and you know, not having the last word and being mean and all. No, this is man, it's God's will. People coming. So we gotta be one minded for them. For where two or more are gathered in my name, he said, There I am in the midst. J just imagine a whole church serving Christ together in agreement in God's wills. This agreement in this text has to do with God's will. It's not loose. It's not like we just praying and just Lord. Just we doing, we praying about anything. Listen, it's about God's will. When Paul even said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, that's not a loose prayer. He said, I can do all things in my responsibility that God has called me to do for his will. Yeah. It's not about everything. It's about specifically God's will. It's not, a, I can do all things. You'll look at that and be like, no. He's talking about specifically what is in God's will for his life and his purpose and what he should do. The one that's in the mindset of the church as we serve and worship will determine how we experience, how long and how wide and how deep and, 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 and how high is the love of Christ that is in God. Or the opposite, that, that is in God, that is in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you, when we want mind, it's powerful. The mindset of the church as we serve and worship determines healing power emotionally. Some of us dealing with mental health, I'm telling you, this is the answer. Physical. Mental. It's the one minus as we serve to help build the kingdom of God that's going to set our church apart and people are going to get healed. God is speaking to us today. Because I'm tired of, you should be tired of leaving here, even me. And come back with the same problems. Strongholds are broken in one minus. Our mindsets must be one. To set the atmosphere for the saving of many souls. I got, I got you. Want you to understand that that we're not having church for the church. A lot of people think we have a church for the church, but we have a church for the unchurch. I mean, I ain't come for those who will. I came for the sick, and that's what we're here for. But it takes me in a one mind, and then that sick person comes. And he's healed. Because that was the mind of Christ. That was the mind of Christ. So let's pray. In agreement. Father, we love you today. 
Heaven is open. Ooh, everybody put your mind on things above. But Christ is seated next to his Father. Oh God, I pray for healing today to drop down. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. I pray that God, we will no longer take you for granted, God, from this day forth. God, give, I pray that, God, you give us a hunger to read your word, a hunger to pray more, a hunger to be kind, because kindness always came before grace and mercy. Have your way in this place, God. I pray today, God, that you will activate us to serve, Lord. You said without you, we can't do nothing, God. You have to activate us. Give us the mind, Lord. Help us to follow through. People that's not involved. We love you. And if you're far away from Christ today, just repeat after me, Father, forgive me of my sins. I, I'm a sinner. I'm in need of grace. I'm in need of your kindness. Please forgive me of all my sin. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe he raised your son from the dead. Now, Holy Spirit, I am clean now. Come inside of me. Help me to move and do God's will. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 See, it's greater than just me being all over the place. It's about God's will. It's about making Jesus real to a dying world.